Hey everyone, welcome back to my chatty, sassy channel here on YouTube where we talk about all things luxury, be it luxury travel, luxury fashion, or life's luxuries in general. Today we are going to be talking about the 10 fashion essentials that I believe every woman should have in her closet. But if you feel like I've missed anything that you think is essential, make sure to put that down in the comments down below as I would love to talk to you guys more about this. If you haven't already done so and you enjoy fashion content, make sure to subscribe down below. So with that, let's get into the video. Now, I think that one of the most overlooked elements of a person's closet, of their accessories that they have, of really any part of a look, is a belt. I think that having a classy, high quality belt is something that having that can elevate a look so much, whereas you don't fully appreciate how much just an ugly belt can really bring an outfit down. So there are two belts that I have to recommend to you guys in the luxury realm today. And the first of which is going to be the Kelly belt from Hermes. Now the downside to this belt, aside from the very high price tag, is that you can only wear it as one color at a time. So you don't have a reversible option as you do with some other belts. But the big thing about this belt is that it gives you the ability to wear it with so many different items. I'm able to wear my Kelly belt with jeans. I'm able to wear it with dress pants. I can wear it with skirts, with different skirts that hit me at different points on my waist. I'm able to wear it with dresses and I'm able to do all of that with just one belt. So I only need that one in my closet. Like I said, the downside being that because I have it in gold, if I wanted to wear it with black stuff, I really couldn't because I don't have a black version of that belt. Now, that being said, this belt has been so versatile that I think it's absolutely worth the money that it's asked for. But if you are wanting a belt that gives you a bit more versatility color-wise as opposed to style-wise that you get with the Kelly, I would really look at the Hermes belt kits. The really neat thing about these belt kits is that the first one that you buy, you have to buy the buckle and the strap. They will very, very rarely sell you just a buckle. You typically have to be a pretty established customer who already has belts from them. But you have so many different options. You can of course go with the very classic H, but there's so many other belt buckle options that are not that, that are going to be much more understated, that don't have the Hermes branding on them. And I think that that is a really fantastic thing. Also the fact that you're able to get this gorgeous quality leather, you have black brown combos, black navy combos, brown and white combos, plenty of bright color combos. Whatever it is that's going to work best for your closet, they probably have a combo that's going to work for you. And they also offer this in multiple different widths, unlike the Kelly belt that's only offered in a very thin width. Now, the downside of course being that if you want to put it up higher on your waist for like a dress versus where you might wear it with your jeans, there will be an issue of you have to sort of pick what size you go with. You can obviously add holes, but that does add length to the tail of the belt. Whereas with the Kelly belt, because of the way that it fastens and it adjusts, you don't ever have a tail going on with your belt, which is another reason why I really like that one. But that being said, I still also have an Hermes belt kit on my wish list for Christmas because of the fact that it is such a useful belt and I have a lot of use for that belt in my collection. I'm specifically wanting one that is black and gray so I can wear it with either color of shoes that I happen to be wearing. Now item number two that I think is an absolute closet essential is going to be a classic really nice tailored white shirt. Now, depending on your body type, this may be easier or harder to find. As I'm someone who has a larger chest, it can be really hard to find a shirt that will button around me and stay closed and classy without it being just huge in the body. It, or maybe it fits me in the body, but the shoulders are really big and huge. And the one that I found that I think is just absolutely extraordinary and brilliant is from Spanx. And this is so smart because it just basically has like two buttons up here above where normal buttons would go. And so like that's functioning buttons, but then the rest of it looks like just regular hidden buttons, except there aren't actually hidden buttons there. It's sewn close. So you pull it on over your head, 
Um, but that's not a problem because of the fact the two buttons at the top allow the collar to be very open and it just fits really well. But because it's actually sewn shut, you aren't going to have any gaping. And it's sewn to a point where you don't have to button any of the buttons to still be modest and professional at the same time, while also looking really, really nice. If you want to, you can obviously splay out the collar more, but I think that this is an excellent, excellent shirt and a really great thing to have as a closet staple. Even though it's not necessarily, Spanx is not necessarily a luxury brand, I feel like that this is the best blouse on the market and it's not a cheap blouse. It's not the most expensive white blouse, but it's also not a cheap blouse as well. So I did want to put that in here for this video. Now, number three, four, and five on this list is going to be related to handbags. And I think that every woman needs three, a minimum of three, I should say, as I definitely have more handbags than I need, but I still love every single one of them. I think that first off, Every woman needs an evening bag. Even if you're someone like me, I maybe go to two or three events where I would need an evening bag a year, if that. And so because of that, I don't want to invest an overwhelming amount of money in a bag like that. I don't want to spend thousands of dollars on an evening bag that's just going to sit in my closet and come out maybe two to three times a year. However, I do have some really great options for you. First off, I think that Strathsbury actually has two excellent ones. The first of which I have, and I will link down my what fits of that video down below, but it is their Strathsbury stylist bag. I think particularly if you're someone like me who wears a lot of black whenever they're going to be in evening situations, going with their black mock croc. First off, the mock croc finish is fantastic, but you couple that with a black color, and this is just a very interesting bag. It's one that you can put the strap on, you can carry it in your hand as an envelope clutch, but it's just very beautiful and it's very different from a lot of other evening bags that you might see because of the material, because of the shape, and it's not a brand that you see everywhere the way that you do with some evening bags, but still holds a pretty good amount. Another one that I really like from them that also does hold your phone is the mini crescent bag. Now, really neat thing is that they're getting ready to release the silver lizard embossed version and the gold lizard embossed version. I have pictures of those right here and like, it is so stunning. The videos that I have seen of these in person is just extraordinary. The shine on them, the leather, the look, this is beautiful. It also has a little bit of asymmetry to it, which I typically go for very symmetric things when I'm going to some type of an evening occasion. So having a bit of asymmetry in the bag, I really, really like. Now, a lot of people do also recommend the Gucci Dionysus Super Mini Bag. My problem with that is that it can be really hard to fit a phone. And in fact, I think that if the phone does fit, I'm pretty sure that it can't be in a case. And that's something that would really bother me because I drop my phone a lot. Um, that being said, they have some beautiful metallics as well as beautiful leather colors in this size of the bag. And it is a very cute, elegant looking bag with a very beautiful piece of bejeweled hardware. Another one that I think is a very interesting option is going with the Jimmy Choo Mini Bon Bon Bag. Again, this is one where like your phone isn't necessarily going to fit perfectly in it because of the small shape, but I think that it's very cute and very interesting. And another bag that's going to be different from a lot of evening styles that a lot of people will be carrying. And they have a lot of beautiful silk colors in it in jewel tone silks, but they also have some crystal versions as well. So I think that this is a great option to look into. Now I did mention three bags that every woman needs and the second of those bags is going to be a classy tote. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I love my Neverfull GM. It is huge, it is massive, but the nice thing about the Neverfull is that you can change the shapes if the sides are cinched in more and that allows me to give it a more tailored look if I don't want it as big whenever I'm going into the office. I also have it in the Damier pattern, which is a lot less in your face than the monogram. So I do recommend looking at Damier or maybe at one of the leathers if you are wanting a monogram. Then the other nice thing about this is that because it is so large, I can take it on the plane and fill it full of all the things I need to fill it with. And I think that that's important because when you're traveling on an airplane, you want to have enough room in that bag that you tuck under the seat that you're able to maximize the stuff that you're bringing with you. So I do really love this bag, but if the Neverfull is too cliche for you, maybe you want something that has a tiny bit more security, I would look at the Goyard Bella Chase bag. Now the difficult thing about Goyard is that it's difficult to get your hands on. You typically have to go in store or buy pre-loved. They will not ship to you. And I recognize that not everyone can get to a Goyard store. I cannot get to a Goyard store. 
but this bag is very beautiful it's very classy there are leather versions on the pre-loved market that don't have the canvas but you also have the canvas options as well and the thing that i love about really high quality canvas bags is that they are super durable you can throw them around you can have them on whatever mode of transportation you're going whether it be public trains whether it be going on the subway going in an uber going on a plane whatever it is that you're going canvas holds up and i think this is a very beautiful one i've also seen that a 15 inch macbook air does actually fit down into this bag which is nice and then it now just has a small little clasp over the top so like it's not enough to keep someone from sticking their hand in but it is enough that it would keep someone from just easily lifting your laptop out and then the final luxury bag that I think that every woman needs is a daily bag. Now, for you, this could be any range of things. Maybe you like to carry a crossbody every day. Maybe you prefer a mini bag for everyday use. Maybe you're like me and you like a top handle bag that also gives you the option to crossbody. Yeah, I have done a whole video talking about different everyday bags that I think are really great, as well as talking about why I think make great first luxury bags. I'll link a couple of those down below if you're interested but one bag that I have to highly recommend that I absolutely love and is the Clooney BB. I have this bag in the modern room canvas and I absolutely adore it. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite bags to use. I think that is really, really fantastic. Now this bag also comes in epi leather options if you aren't wanting the monogram canvas like what mine comes in, but the epi leather is going to have a little bit higher of a price on the brand new in store price. However, on the pre-loved market, you can find plenty of good deals on these. I got mine from my husband. He got it on the pre-loved market and paid, I think, $1,500 for it. So a really great savings. I think that another really great bag, if you're looking for more of a camera style, is going to be the YSL camera bag. They do not come with a back pocket in the pouch, and I will link both the Clooney BB as well as this one, like what fits down below in the description. But this is just a really great bag. I've taken it out in the rain, I've taken it out in the snow. It has held up wonderfully. I have not babied that bag at all this entire year that I've had it. And it doesn't have a single scratch on it because it is a very good quality leather. I got mine with the silver hardware because I'm more of a silver hardware person and I just felt like that fit the vibe of the bag better. But I think that is another really great option if you are someone who is looking for a crossbody for your everyday bag. Now, one of the areas that I think is really essential to get a good quality item in is going to be shoes. And I believe there are two pairs that every woman needs. First off, I think that every woman needs a good pair of heels. Now that heel height is going to vary depending on what you are comfortable walking in. If you're comfortable walking in a four inch heel like I am, then go for the four inch heel. But if you maybe can only handle a two inch heel, then only go for the two inch heel. Because if you are not comfortable and if you don't feel stable walking in that shoe, it doesn't matter how beautiful the shoe is, it's not going to show you off to your best ability. So when it comes to heels, I have three recommendations to look at. First off, I would recommend looking at the Gian Benito Rossi pump. I think that this is very beautiful. Their pumps in both the 85 and the 105 millimeter heel heights, so looking at like three and four inches, are worn by basically every single royal woman across the board. There were so many of these pumps at King Charles's coronation and they're beautiful shoes, but they are also very comfortable shoes, which is important. That's why so many of these women wear them is because they're very comfortable to wear. And if you're going to be standing up, walking around, presenting, even if you're just going out on a date with your partner, you want to make sure that you are stable and that you are comfortable because there's no worse feeling than walking around with your feet hurting because then you start doing the like tiptoe, like ow this hurts, ow this hurts, ow this hurts. And no one wants that because you want to be able to enjoy the time that you are in these shoes. Now my personal heart when it comes to luxury shoes is always going to be Christian Louboutin. And contrary to what most people say, I find Louboutins to be very comfortable. Not the Socate pumps. If you're looking at the Socates, like those are just a crime against women's feet. I get that they make the legs and everything look good, but oh my word, those are so horribly, horribly uncomfortable. And this is coming from someone who wears heels basically every single day for the past 10 years. And I find those heels to be extremely uncomfortable. But the ones that are very comfortable is the Kate style in these shoes. And one of the things I really appreciate about Christian Louboutin is that 
when it comes to nude, one of the things that he has said about nude heels is that nude is a concept, not a color. And so he has all different variations of skin tones to match your skin tone to what is nude for you, which I think is really incredible if you're looking for a nude pump. If you're looking for a black pump, I mean, they're stunning. You can get them in patent. You can get these shoes in smooth leather. There's also, I believe, suede in the Kates as well. For whatever material it is that you're looking for, I personally really like a smooth leather, um, but that's just me. That's because I worry about scuffing up a patent shoe much more than I do about a smooth shoe. That being said, if the 100 millimeter Kates are too high for you, that's about a four inch heel, and you want to instead go with a three inch heel, I think that the Kate Slingbacks, so the first one I was talking about was the Kate Pump, the Kate Slingbacks I think are gorgeous, particularly in these lower heel heights. And there's also, I believe, a 60 as well, which is like a 20, or which is like a two inch heel. And I think that they are beautiful. Whenever I've tried these on in the store, sales associates, who weren't even my sales associate, had nothing to gain by telling me this, walked around and was just like, those heels look really, really good on you and they're short and they still look really good. And the beautiful thing about Christian Louboutin shoes is that Christian Louboutin really understands how a woman's foot and leg look in a shoe. And so he makes shoes that position your feet and your legs in very, very nice ways. And I think this is a very beautiful, but again, also very comfortable shoe option to wear. I have a pair of shoes that's not discontinued, but I'm able to wear those shoes all day and be just fine because they're extremely well-made shoes. Are they pricey? Yes. Do I think they're worth the investment? Also, yes. Now, I did also mention that I think that every woman needs two pairs of shoes. And the second pair, besides just a pair of heels that I think every woman needs, is a very classy looking pair of flats. Now, I've talked on this channel before about how much I like my Tory Burch flats. And while I do love them, that's not the type of flat that I'm talking about because that has some logo and some branding on it. I'm talking about just some very beautiful, classic, simple flats. I think the Dior actually does a really lovely pair. I also really like um, Ultra Zura's pair. I think that they are really beautiful. They have like the bow on the back of theirs and you can easily get a good pair of leather flats. They just need to be of a good quality leather in order to look really nice and of course fit your foot well. I also am not a fan of the Chanel ballet flats. I think that ballet flat is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about classy looking flat because the ballet flat can go really casual and you want a shoe that you can wear with a flat in the office during the day, but then also go out to dinner afterwards. That's the type of look that I'm going for. I have a pair that I love. If I, if they are still available, I will link them down below in the description. Now, moving on to jewelry. There are just some pieces of jewelry. They're so classic that I do think that is something that every woman should want to have in their collection. And the first thing is going to be a pair of diamond stud earrings. Now, diamond stud earrings, can get expensive and the higher quality that you get, the more expensive that they can go. But I think that if you look around, you can definitely find some that are very good quality. They're going to look nice in your ears. And I really recommend actually going with lab created diamonds here because let's be honest, you can't actually with the naked eye tell the difference between a lab created diamond and a natural diamond. They're diamonds, like they're, they're the same. Um, it just has to do with how they were produced and if you go with lab create you're able to get a larger pair of diamond studs without having to spend the money. Now another thing to note is that a lot of local jewelers will do a program where if you buy your studs from them over time you can buy them back at like 110%. So over time you can work to upgrade your diamond studs without having to buy like five different pairs over your life. You can slowly but surely work up to having a very nice sizable pair of diamond studs. So look into that as well. Don't just feel like that you have to go with like a Tiffany. In fact, I would recommend not going with someone like Tiffany or Cartier for your diamonds because they're charging a premium just for the color box that it comes in, not for any difference in the actual quality of the pieces themselves. Now, to go along with that, I think that you also need a beautiful pendant necklace. Now, I'm not saying that this needs to be a diamond pendant necklace. Some of my favorites are actually not going to have a diamond in them. And if you want a diamond pendant, I think that is amazing. Again, I really recommend looking at your regular jewelers because they'll have the same type of settings, the same, you can get the same beautiful quality of flawless stone, but you aren't having to pay for the name on the box, you're paying for the product. And I think that that is a much better way to spend your money than paying for a box. 
Now, other options that are not diamond options, and so I really actually do love the Tiffany, I think it's 1754 is what the collection is, but it's this beautiful ring necklace. I actually have this myself, but it is very beautiful. It's very classy. It can go day to night. It can go with anything that you're wearing. And because it is in the sterling silver, if you go with white gold settings for your studs, they'll still match and coordinate and work together. I think another great option is also going to be from David Yurman. And it is this circle pendant here. Again, both of these products are linked down in the description down below. But I think this is another really beautiful option that has diamond chips in it. But because it's sterling silver with diamond chips, it's going to be a lot more affordable to get than what some of the other pieces, such as getting a diamond and pendant necklace might be. Now the final item on my list that I think that every woman should have in her collection is going to be a signature scent. Now I do understand that there are people with asthma who this one could be a hard one for them to handle. And if that's the case, then absolutely don't get a scent, it's not worth your breath. But if you are someone who is able to handle scented perfumes, I think that going with a luxury scent that really speaks to you, that you can wear over time for all those big events in your life is something that is really, really nice. I alternate between two. I alternate between my Chanel number no. five and then my Celine scent. And between the two of them, it gives me enough variation that I feel like that I'm not wearing the exact same thing every day, but it's also something that is very unique to me and that my husband recognizes as being what I normally wear. And yes, they are expensive, but perfumes last for so long. Like I've had my Chanel number no. five that I use quite frequently and I'm still in the same bottle that I got three years ago and it still smells beautiful. And so because of that, I don't mind paying a little bit more for a really expensive perfume that has just this gorgeous elevated scent to it. Now, a lot of people really like Louis Vuitton perfumes. I personally don't. To me, Louis Vuitton perfumes don't smell good on me and actually a lot of them irritate my skin. So I don't wear Louis Vuitton perfume, but if that is the scent that really speaks to you, go with that scent. And there are plenty of different places you can go to try them on, obviously department stores, beauty stores will have a lot of different options for you, but I think that picking a signature scent is something that is really, really special that can add just a little bit of extra sense to your memories and whenever you put that scent on, bring you back to various times in your life. So with that, I hope you have a great rest of your day, everyone, and that you have enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure to subscribe down below and have a great rest of your day. Bye!